the world's first 747. It's the early 1970s, and you are flying on a brand new plane, the luxurious 747. You can't believe what you see in front of you. The large airplane is as large as a five-story building. No, larger actually. The airline, Pan Am, or Pan American World Airways. That is how I believe uh, people must have felt when the first 747 flight with Pan Am took place. Now let's talk more about Pan Am, the unofficial national airline of the US. Let's talk about it. Pan Am was founded on the 14th of March 1927 as Pan American Airways. Pan Am started its South American route with a consolidated Commodore and Sikorsky S-38 flying boats. The S-40, larger than the 8-passenger S-38, began flying for Pan Am in 1931. Carrying the nicknames American Clipper, Southern Clipper and Caribbean Clipper, they were the first of the series of 28 clippers that symbolized Pan Am between 1931 and 1946. On the 5th of July 1937, survey flights across the North Atlantic began. Tribe decided to start a service from San Francisco, Honolulu, and on to Hong Kong and Auckland following steamship routes. Tribe, by the way, was the CEO of Pan Am. After negotiating traffic rights in 1934 to land at Pearl Harbor, Midway Island, Wake Island, Guam, and Manila, Pan Am shipped $500,000 worth of aeronautical equipment and construction crews westward in March of 1935 using the SS North Haven, a 15 ton, no, a 15,000 ton. I'm not sure if that's 15 or I think it's 15,000 ton merchant ship chartered for the purpose of provisioning each island that the clippers would stop at in on their four to five day flight. Pan Am ran its first survey flight to Honolulu in April of 1935 with a Sikorsky S-42 flying boat. The airline won the contract for a San Francisco to Canton Mail Road later that year and operated its first commercial flight carrying mail and express in a Martin M130 from Alameda to Manila amid media fanfare on the 22nd of November 1935. The five leg 8,000 mile or 13,000 kilometer flight arrived in Manila on the 29th of November and returned to San Francisco on the 6th of December, cutting the time between the two cities by the fastest scheduled steamships by over two weeks. The fare from San Francisco to Manila or Hong Kong in 1937 was US dollars one way, which is about $19,340 in 2022. On the 6th of August 1937, Yuan Tribe accepted United States Aviation's highest annual prize, the Collier Trophy, on behalf of Pan American Airways from President Franklin D. Roosevelt for the company's establishment of the Trans-Pacific Airline and the successful execution of extended overall to navigation and the regular operations thereof. Th th that was a mouthful. Anyways, six large long-range Boeing 314 flying boats were delivered to Pan Am in early 1939. On the 13th of March 1939, the Yankee Clipper, piloted by Harold E. Gray, made the first ever transatlantic passenger flight. The first leg of the flight, which was from Baltimore to Horta, took 17 hours and 32 minutes and covered 2,400 miles or 3,900 kilometers. The second leg from Horta to Pan Am's newly built airport in Lisbon took 7 hours and uh, 7 minutes and covered 1,200 miles or 1,900 kilometers. Pan Am also used Boeing 314 flying boats for their Pacific routes. Pan American Airways also started a route to 
Marcel France. The Clippers, the name hearkened back to the 19th century fast sailing Clippers, were the only American passenger aircraft of the time capable of intercontinental travel. To compete with ocean liners, the airline offered first class seats on such flights, and the style of flight crews became more formal. Instead of being leather jacketed, silk scarfed airmail pilots, the crews of the Clippers wore no- naval style uniforms and adopted a set procession. I don't know what procession means, actually. But anyway, uh, when boarding the aircraft. In 1940, Pan Am and TWA both received and began using the Boeing 307 Stratoliner, the first pressurized airline to enter service. The Boeing 307's airline service was short-lived as all were commandeered for military service when the United States entered World War II. During World War II, most Clippers were pressed into military service. In January of 1942, the Pacific Clipper completed the first circumnavigation of the globe by a commercial airliner, and it was by complete accident. Paper Skies has a fantastic video about that. Seriously, I remembered it randomly like many months after I watched it, and I could still kind of remember the title. It's a great video. Go watch it. Anyways, another first occurred in in January of 1943 when Franklin D. Roosevelt became the first US president to fly abroad in the Dixie Clipper. During this period, Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry was a Clipper pilot. He was aboard the Clipper Eclipse when it crashed in Syria on the 19th of June 1947. The growing importance of air transport in the post-war era meant that Pan Am would no longer enjoy the official patronage it had been uh, afforded in pre-war days to prevent the emergence of any meaningful competition, both at home and abroad. Although Pan Am continued to use its political influence to lobby for protection of its position as America's primary international airline, it encountered increasing competition first from American export airlines across the Atlantic to Europe and subsequently from others including TWA to Europe, Braniff to South America, United to Hawaii and Northwest Orient to East Asia as well as five potential rivals to Mexico. American Overseas Airlines was the first airline to begin regular land plane flights across the Atlantic on the 24th of October 1945. And I think that made Pan Am a little mad because in uh, January of 1946, Pan Am scheduled seven DC-4s a week, a week, east from LaGuardia Airport, five to London and two to uh, Lisbon. TWA's impending introduction of its faster pressurized Lockheed constellations resulted in Pan Am ordering its own constellation fleet at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a piece that's not pocket change um kind of expensive anyway pan am began transatlantic constellation flights on january 14th of 1946 beating twa by three weeks in january of 1946 a flight from miami to buenos aires took 71 hours and 15 minutes in a pan am dc3 but the following summer dc4 flew flew idle while to buenos aires in 38 hours and 30 minutes while being modern-day JFK airport. In January of 1946, Pan Am had no Trans-Pacific flights beyond Hawaii, but they soon resumed those flights with DC-4s. In June of 1947, Pan Am started the first scheduled round-the-world airline flight. In September, the weekly DC-4 was scheduled to leave San Francisco at 10 p.m. on a Tuesday as Flight 1, stopping at Honolulu, Midway, Wake, Guam, Manila, Bangkok, and arriving in Kolkata on Monday at 12.45 p.m., where it met Flight 2, a constellation that had left New York at 9.30 p.m. on Friday. The DC-4 returned to San Francisco as Flight 2. The constellation left Kolkata at 13.30 on a Thursday, no, Tuesday, and stopped at Karachi, Istanbul, London, Shannon, Gander, and arrived at LaGuardia on a Thursday 
at 2.55 p.m. All Pan Am around the world flights included at least one change of plane until Boeing 707s took over in 1960. And that's all. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.